<coughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel Just for the question um, I hope you're all doing great And you're all happy um, Yes, today what I'm going to talk about Is um, A disability called Cerebral Portly, Cerebral Portly, sorry. Um, as, they've, as you may or may, may not know, um, I have Cerebral Portly, and in previous videos I have mentioned that, and I have mentioned how my Cerebral Portly affects my horse riding. Um, but I'm never actually talking about what is cerebral palsy and how does it manifest in itself in a person um, and where how does a person develop it or get it uh, and well today's in today's video we will discuss that and while hopefully having a bit of fun because it, I want your video to be enjoyable and entertaining if possible. Um, so yes, I'm going to keep it like that as much as possible. Um, uh, see how we go. Um, so, what is cerebral palsy? Okay, first of all, cerebral means the brain. So it has the condition is affects the brain. Poorly means weakness or powerless. So a part of the brain that is affected by cerebral palsy is paralyzed or weak. Right? Now, that's what the two words mean. So cerebral palsy is a neurological disorder which is means brain, anything to do with the brain. That affects the coordination of a person's muscles. Um, so you may have be a person who has stiff joints or a person like myself with a shake in their hands. So that basically my brain is telling my hand to shake all the time. Okay, and this is due to a result of brain damage um, or abnormal development of the brain. Now, I'm just careful because I, when I say as a result of, we can't say a cause of because as you will learn later on in this video, uh, we actually don't know what causes cerebral palsy. Um, now, we know when cerebral palsy, or we briefly know when it, it happens, your brain damage happens, a brain abnormal, um, or Grow, development happen, and it happens either during the pregnancy of your child, and during the birth of the uh, or sorry, or during the birth of the child, or just after, like up to one month after the birth of your child. So in those three time periods is when we believe. Cerebral palsy happens, uh, develops, but we don't know what causes it, and uh, that's unfortunate. So, what are the um, risk factors? We know there are certain risk factors that are associated with people with cerebral palsy. So. It now generally accepted in the um, academic and scientific fields 
got 740 is a series of causal pathways or a sequence of effects. So, I, yeah, so it arises from these causal, causal pathways or a sequence of effects. So what that means is the following risk factors have been present in people with cerebral palsy. Now we don't know, we can't say they caused the person to get cerebral palsy, but all we know is that they've been present and they're higher risk factors. Now, these risk factors are <clears throat> a premature birth earlier than 37 weeks, um, prolonged oxygen loss during the pregnancy or at the birth, a low birth rate, weight, sorry, weight, um, being a twin, and um, what else? Being male, um, is another risk factor. Having blood clotting problems is another risk factor. And then another risk factor would be if the mother's blood type is different to the child, the baby's blood type. These are all risk factors associated with people with cerebral palsy. Now, we don't know what they cause them, but we know that they are associated. So, i give you an example of myself, okay? <clears throat> I'm obviously male, but I got one risk factor. Um, I, my birth was a traumatic birth. I suffered a lack of oxygen at birth. So that another risk factor. Um, if I if I remember correctly, the story was that my mom also had a flu or a virus of some kind during my mom, during her pregnancy with me. So that a third risk factor. Now, which one of them? caused the brain damage to give me, resulting in me having cerebral palsy, we don't know. And when it happened, we don't know. It could have been at my birth when I had a uh, lack of oxygen, or it could have been that when my mum got the flu during the pregnancy, my brain didn't develop properly during that period. We don't know. It either are or it could be a combination. So that's the problem. We don't know the exact cause of shared poverty, but we do know what being associated or what being present with people with shared poverty. I hope that explains it right. Now, what are the, what are some of the characteristics of people with shared poverty? Well, you will learn, you will see some people with shared palsy with movement and walking difficulties. So people with, who have limbs are people who have an arm, a leg, not generally in one position, it kind of, it, it will automatically go back to that position and then you have to find it hard to move it. And then you have someone like myself who would have speech difficulties. And as well, like myself, I have epilepsy. That's another characteristic of someone who has cerebral palsy. And then some people have learning difficulties and hearing and vision loss. So these are all types of characteristics associated with cerebral palsy. Now, 
Um, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's what it is and what we can't cause of it. Now, what, there are four main types of cerebral palsy. Um, the most common that around like 80% of people with cerebral palsy would be a concussed spastic cerebral palsy. And that is caused by um, damage, brain damage to the motor cortex of the brain. Um, and then, yeah, you get so I don't get remember what part of the brain that is in. And um, let me give me two seconds. Yes, um, let's see now what I've told you so poorly. Oh, yeah. sorry, I don't have it on me. I'm probably like, kick it like the back of your head, come back of your head, I think that's where it is. Um, then the next, um, yeah, so, how is a ticket so important and uh, manifesting itself is, um, stiffness of, um, stiffness of, um, muscles and legs, you know, muscles in your legs or in your arms, like in your limbs, I'm sorry, that's the way. The stiffness of your limbs, so it, you may see a person with a hand that, an arm that is always permanently like that, like in front of them, or um, permanently in, your ha in that position, or your leg is like across the other leg. Sorry, I can't see that, I don't know why I'm doing that. <laughs> Apologies. But yeah, so you may see, um, a person with said poor that has their legs crossed in a funny manner, in a certain manner, sorry. Um, that is called artistic cerebral palsy and it is a, um, as I say, it is a re result of muscles being stiff and tight. Um, yes. I, uh, bonus fact is, statistic is a, um, where the word spa to mock someone who looks, who's done something stupid or looks something, um, looks stupid. That's where the word came from, unfortunately. I did not talk, a oh, nice thing to say, but that is where the word came from. Um, statistic. Um, then the second term, second type of cerebral palsy, um, affecting around about six percent of people with cerebral palsy, is called, uh, forgive me if I'm pronouncing it wrong, dystonetic palsy, um, also known as atroid cerebral palsy. Um, it is a result of damage to the vasculitis part of your brain. Um, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, it is also it characterized as people who have involuntary movement of their joints or their arms and um, so, in a way, you can say I have it with my hand. I don't, um, because of my hand shakes involuntarily, I'm not deciding to shake my hand. It, um, uh, involuntary shake. You can say I have dyslexic genetic cerebral palsy. But actually, what I have always been diagnosed as is the third type of cerebral palsy and that is called ataxia cerebral palsy and that is 
again affect by 60% of people with cerebral palsy and it is characterized as shaky movement. So with me shaking, um, I tend to shake more than involuntary. Involuntary, what I mean by involuntary movement is like something like that or nodding your head um, involuntarily. That would be more just kinetic. Well, I have a shake. Um, even though it's involuntarily, it's still a shake. So I have ataxia cerebral palsy. And the other reason, the other reason I have, not reason, sorry, um, another um, sign of ataxia cerebral palsy is um, they have it affects your person balance and coordination. So sometimes when I'm drinking particularly hot drinks or if the glass is small, like a like a small tea cup, which are espresso cups, you know those small espresso cups which are low. But sometimes it get really hot and full, my, I have trouble lifting the, the cup and having them balanced properly, but also I have trouble from moving from this position, the cup in this position, to my mouth. I, I can't do it sometimes, I need to work it out, I need to sometimes push, put it down try again and when my mouth um, meets the cup like this and I take a shot my brain then knows oh how to do it it's like oh I can coordinate it but before then my brain was saying oh how do I coordinate how do I match the cup to my mouth, how do I do that? And I have to like sometimes literally force myself up to force the top up to my mouth. Um, a, a weird feeling. Um, so yes, that's called ataxia and also it affects the muscles around your mouth and that's why I have a speech impediment. It because my lips my muscles in my lips can't, can't form properly, they're paralyzed, are weak, and they're not forming a perfect curve around um, our opening to pronounce certain letters. So like, I think I have difficulty pronouncing my R's or something, or yes, or S's and W's, W's, okay, W's, I think. Um, because my lips couldn't form in a certain way that it, it needed to pronounce that particular letter or letters. So, and the fourth type of cerebral palsy is a mixture. You can have a mixture of dyskinetic and ataxia, but just, just, or just, disconnected. So that's the fourth element. Um, so yes, now moving on from that, um, there are some famous people at the which are poetry, if you don't know. Um, if anyone remembers well, not that too long ago. You know the famous TV show, um, Netflix show, I mean, Breaking Bad. And do you remember the son in that called Walter Jr.? Well, the actor who plays him, called R.J. Meek, sorry, he actually does have cerebral palsy, cerebral palsy. Um, and then, 
I got a famous runner called Justin Delagos, and I think a fat runner with Sarah Palsy to be sponsored by Nike. Um, then a famous um, author, Irish author and painter called Christy Brown, um, and he actually wrote and painted using his left foot. He used to put um, a paintbrush in between his toes, like that, and actually paint with a brush, left foot. Um, and there's actually a good Philly film from the 1980s called My Left Foot. Um, again, you have read this today, a famous lady called um, Abby Curran from America. She's, um, she's a contestant in the American pageant. Now, okay, forgive me for mentioning the pageant. Yeah, regardless, if you're white right or wrong, I'm not too sure. Um, I'm going to kind of go. Um, I'm going to go objectify women. Um, but with that said, it doesn't show that women with disabilities. <sighs> forgive me, forgive me. In, I'm getting, in, it can be seen as beautiful. I can be. And that is a big problem, actually, um, for women and men with disabilities, not being seen as desirable. Um, and she actually now is a chairperson of her own pageant called the Miss You Can Do It pageant. So I can get very good. Um, then there's a famous lady called Anne MacDonald, who's an Australian activist and author. And then a very funny lady called May Soon Shad, a comedian, an American-Palestinian comedian and activist. Um, I have heard her. She actually is quite funny. Um, so, that's basically what cerebral palsy is. Now, there are some misconceptions and myths surrounding cerebral palsy. And I think we go through them. You get a number, number five or six again, right? Um, you can inherit cerebral palsy, or CP. You can call it CP. Now, there's some element of truth, of truth to this, but it literally, like, 1% of cerebral palsy, a particular type that represents only 1% or less of people with cerebral palsy, that is inherited. 99% of people with cerebral palsy is a result of brain damage, and you cannot inherit it. Um, and you only got one percent that you can it between siblings who are twins. So if, like if you have twin have it if you have twin you may have it. So um that oh they so get ninety nine percent. No. So probably is not inherited. All people with C P have intellectual disabilities. No, that's a myth. Some do. Um, it is quite high rate of it. Yes, granted. But not everyone has I intellectual disabilities. Um, children with cerebral palsy can talk. They can. Um, not some of them don't. Some of them have communication like, depending on the severity of cerebral palsy. In my case, I was mild, so I was able to talk somewhat. And um, well, there was a time when my, only my mom could understand me. And um, the other thing, cerebral palsy is contagious. Um, like epilepsy, no, it's not. 
it can be contagious. It's a matter of actually damaging a brain. It physical damage, trauma to something. You can't catch that. It's not a virus. It, you can't transmit it over air. So no, it's not contagious. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know how you. Anyway, moving on. Um, kids with cerebral cannot make friends. Um, no, that is a myth. Kids with cerebral can make friends. I have loads of friends. I had loads of friends with when I was growing up, and one of them who I actually made friends with in preschool, when I was like three or four, and that is still my, one of my dear friends, my best friend at the age of 40. So, yeah, he's my longest ever friend. Um, so, yes, we can make friends. Now, people with cerebral palsy, kids with cerebral palsy will have, and tend to have, more difficulty finding friends. But that's a societal thing, where they get aptly the child with cerebral palsy. Um, kids with cerebral palsy will never learn to walk. Um, no, that's again one. Yes, I couldn't walk for the first four or five years, I think it was. Um, I'm, I'm now horse riding and I'm climbing mountains. I did climb mountains, mountains and I'm walking fine. So, yeah, it, again, it depends on your, um, Severity of the condition and the type of condition, people with autistic cerebral palsy probably will walk with a limp for the rest of their life, all their lives. And that's the way it is. I don't have that, but I have speech impediment for the rest of my life. Um. Then, okay, so let's. Briefly go on and I don't know what it's a long video my apologies. Um I hope you are staying tuned. Um Sheriff Horsey unfortunately can't be cured. And it should it be cured or not? I it's a difficult one. And that's a whole different topic. Um But it can be managed. And one way it can be managed is through a therapy called hippotherapy. And no, you're not handing out a riding hippopotamus. No. Um, <laughs> hippotherapy is actually um, another word for equine or horse therapy. Riding horses. And... Um, there has been a study recently from America and a Korean professors and um, two uh, colleges, universities I mean, um, called horse riding confirmed as a fiber mobility treatment for cerebral palsy. It has been scientifically confirmed that it is to it benefits people with cerebral palsy. And um, what you did in this study, they attached sensors to the horses and their child's bodies. And they measured the rhythm of the two bodies and they found out that the horse's body adapts to the child's rhythm and vice versa, the child adapts the rhythm, I get used to the rhythm of the horse. And what they suspect is happening here, or what they hope to happen, is that the neurological, neuromuscle development of the child is learning are adapting new ways to the horse's gait. If you 
look at a horse's gait um that just strides just steps like from one step to another step like so um it is similar to a human gait we walk the same way right um and what they are suggesting that the way the horses walk the child feet senses get rhythm and learns that their body in a way learn new muscle memory from this horse's rhythm and it improves their balance and their own rhythm and walking and it helps them um learn it helps them to improve their own walking when they're off they're not walking on the horse with the horse um so it also the repetitiveness of the rhythm is also enhances the muscle memory that's what they're looking at so the um just to briefly go over it, the gait of the horse is adapting to the child's needs, but at the same time it is teaching uh, the muscle memory of the child to enhance their muscles, own muscles, to walk in a particular way, to move in a particular way, and similar to the horse's rhythm. And that rhythm help them walk naturally, or walk normally. Um, and also people with, with cerebral palsy tend to have depressed, tend to be more anxious and tend to suffer from emotional troubles, um, emotional and challenging behaviour. Um, I know myself, I had had depression and challenging behaviour and being with horses is an emotional support mechanism. It helps you relax and calm down and release any anxiety. So those are two ways hypnotherapy um, work and help to improve um, a child or an adult which is important, how to improve their life, sorry. Um, now, I am going to cut it short here because I've gone far away in my longer video and thank you very much for watching it. I'm, I'm really delighted where this is going and the support you are giving me and I really hope you have gotten something for it. And if you made it this far, Congratulations. Well done. Um, okay, and I hope to see you later on in the next video. Thank you. Bye.